Okay, so it doesn't look like much just yet, but in this two-part series, we're going to build a computer case out of some acrylic and some plywood with no particularly fancy tools. I started by ripping off the factory edge of the plywood. As the edge is going to be very visible, it's best to start with as clean an edge as possible. Next, I measured out for the cross cut. This project actually uses very little of a sheet, but it was just slightly more than a project panel size, which is a quarter sheet. Two quarter sheets worked out to be just too expensive by comparison. Make sure you've got the right type of blade installed. While I'm ripping the plywood down at the table saw, you want at least 40 teeth on your saw blade to cut plywood cleanly. Then it was just a matter of breaking down the plywood into more manageable pieces before cutting it into strips. 40 strips needed all up. With all the strips cut to width, I need to cut them to the length because otherwise this is going to be a pretty massive case. There are two main tools that are going to come to mind when you're going to batch out a bunch of cuts. The miter saw or the table saw with a sled or with a miter gauge. My preference for the two major tools is that the miter saw is great for large unwieldy pieces. So the longer and heavier they are, it's better. But for smaller pieces, the table saw is generally speaking better, I find. You don't have to wait for the blade to come to a halt like you do on the miter saw. So you can cut one out, move on to the next, and you don't have to wait for the rev up, rev down type stuff. You don't have to have a fancy sled like this one, though a stop of some sort does make it a lot easier. Uh, if you're using a miter gauge, just put a fence on it and it makes it pretty easy too. With that being said, everything needs to be cut down to 480 millimeters. So each one of these lengths will yield two pieces and then that'll end up giving me 40 pieces all up, which will give us 10 per side. To assist with the glue up, I created two clamping jigs. I'm drilling 12mm holes for 12mm dowels, spaced 36mm apart. This creates fingers that'll push the strips into alignment. These are through holes. The dowels were cut off camera to 53mm each. I could then secure a backing piece to the jig. That way when the dowels are inserted, all I have to do is make sure they bottom out to get the alignment perfect. I don't have to measure each one. Because the dowels are smaller than the thickness of the plywood fingers, I don't have to worry about squeeze out causing any inaccuracies. If you like the sort of things I do here and are able to, consider chipping in a few bucks on Patreon. If not, no problem. These videos will always remain free to watch. Then I could go ahead with the glue up, making sure to saturate each piece. Pipe or parallel clamps work best here to hold things up while you place each strip. To make sure the strips don't shift up or down, I added several coils, just some plywood with packing tape. This stops you needing dominoes or biscuits for alignment. Once everything was dried, I could remove the squeeze out. You could use a belt sander, but I find those too hard to keep things flat. A homemade flush trim plane got rid of the largest lumps, then a hand plane makes it flat and smooth.
So you can see all these surfaces are cleaned up. They're flat. They're not necessarily the cleaner, so some sanding will be needed later on. Uh, and I've laid them out edge to edge, and this is how I'd fold it up. So when it is actually going to be glued up into a case, it'll come out round like so. It's important to lay this out now so that uh, all the opposing parts are actually in the right spot and you don't end up with uh, two joins that weren't joined together. I've also clearly labelled the inside. I've used a Sharpie. Uh, normally probably wouldn't do that, but it shows up better on camera. Front piece, the base piece, the back and the top. I'm going to focus on the base and the top for now. They both are going to receive a large mortise for case fans. Now I've got 120 mil case fans. I'm going to have two on the top, two on the bottom, and they're going to sit in like that. For this design, I'm not going to have a through hole. I'm going to have a mortise essentially for the fans to sit in and then some through grooves uh, for the air to actually flow through. Uh, if you don't want to go for that approach and you want to just do a cutout, that's fine. Use a drill to start a pilot hole and then just use a jigsaw to cut it all out. Because I don't want that look, and it is all about the look, uh, I am going to use a router to route a depth of, it's about 22 millimeters for this fan, I think, might be 24, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna route to that depth, and then come back with a smaller bit from the other side and cut grooves along the length. Those grooves will sort of fall in line with how the plywood looks, so to me it'll look more subtle, I guess, while still providing airflow. So this exact layout will be in the plans, but uh, I've basically just centered the two fans on the piece of plywood. And that gives us uh, a few advantages by centering it. It's gonna be the same on both panels. So that means with our edge guide, we can start at one edge, go along, flip it onto the other side of the panel, that's the other edge and do the same on the other panel as well. So we end up making fewer changes to the router setup, which makes it a lot quicker. For the power supply, we need a through hole. You could route this or drill it all out, but the quickest way is to drill some pilot holes wide enough for your jigsaw blade. Unfortunately, the blade I had did not handle the changing grain of the plywood laminations too well, and it was pretty coarse. I came back with a rasp and sandpaper to make it square and smooth. We're just after a snug fit here. So I think for this episode, we're gonna leave it here. We've got the power supply mounted and slots or spots for two case fans on the top and on the bottom. And this is what it looks like with a very loose fitting dry fit. So obviously these gaps would close up with clamping pressure and glue, but I'm gonna knock this down so I can keep working on it. In the next episode, we're going to put some supports in for the motherboard, cut out the panel for the IO tray, 
drill a hole for the power button, which is yet to actually arrive, glue it all up, uh, cut out the acrylic panels, and make it look all nice and pretty. Thanks for watching.